Shalom everybody, Shana Tova once again, hope you're doing well. Hope the Chagim, the holidays have been incredible, inspiring, uplifting, and so many good things for you. And uh, we're here at the beginning of the Torah again, starting once again, all over again, connecting the end of the Torah to the beginning of the Torah, the last letter of the Torah, the Lama, to the first letter, Bet, spelling Lev, right, which means heart. And it's with our hearts that we immediately begin the Torah again once we finish it. And it's with that kind of passion, that kind of heart, and that kind of desire that uh, we continue year after year as a Jewish people to tell our story over and over again. And each year, revealing new things about the Torah and about ourselves and about the world. And connected to that idea, I want to share one thought from this week's Torah portion. We always have there's so many things to say about each and every Torah portion. And probably that rings true the most for this week. Uh, Bereshit, the first part of the first Torah portion of the entire Torah. There's so many secrets, there's so many hidden things. The creation of the world, uh, given over to us in, in just a few brief uh, sentences. And um, so many things unknown. And um, sometimes when we, when we go deeper, so those things that are unknown become known. And some things that are just meant to be left in the realm of the unknown. But one of the many things that we could talk about this week and um, we will right now, is the story of Cain and Abel, Cain and Hebel, right? the, the sons of Adam and Chava, Adam and Eve. And we learned something very interesting about them. We know that this is the case of the first murder in the world, unfortunately already in the first generation of human beings. And um, first instance of brotherly hate, which unfortunately has plagued the world ever since up until today, very deeply. But something came to me this week, this year, learning the phrases of the story that goes against the conventional way that we understand it, but hey, as we said, that's what it's all about, right? Learning the Torah, we, we see new things, we, we reveal new things, new things are revealed to us. So maybe someone somewhere along the way, the past few thousand years of Jewish learning has said this, but um, this is what came to me. And we're learning in the story of Cain and Abel. Right, that they're, they're both born and they both offer uh, different offerings to God. And um, Abel, right, Hevel's offering gets uh, accepted by God and Cain's doesn't. And he gets upset about this. And then the Torah says to us like this. It says that Cain spoke with his brother Abel. That he said something to his brother Abel. But then the verse goes on to say, and it happened when they were in the field that Cain rose up and, against his brother Abel and killed him. So the big question that everybody asks is, well, the, the, the Torah started to tell us that Cain was speaking to Abel, but it never actually tells us what he said. And there's different understandings, there's different commentaries that share different thoughts about what he said. But here's another idea. Here's another possibility um, in terms of what this verse means. Maybe we can understand this verse to say, to me, in the following. That it says, Cain spoke with his brother Abel. He said to his brother Abel. And again, the conventional, the traditional way of understanding this is that we don't know what he says. Sorry about that. What if the verse meant this? What if we read it like this? Cain spoke with his brother Abel. What did he say? He said the following. He said, Abel, look, it's written in the Torah the following words, and it happened when they were in the field that Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. What if Cain spoke? We know exactly what he said. He said what it says in this verse, that Cain whispered into the, into the ear, into the ear of Abel, his brother, and said, look, I don't want to kill you. I don't want to rise up against you, but katuv Torah. this is what it says in the Torah, this is what it's written in the Torah, that we're going to be in the field, and I, your brother, am going to rise up against you and kill you. I don't understand why, but this is the way it's meant to be. Now I know at some level it sounds horrible, it sounds like what, murder was meant to be, he was supposed to murder his brother? We don't understand. On some level I can imagine Cain saying to his brother, I don't understand any of this, but this is what's supposed to be. I, I can imagine Abel saying back to his brother, says, I also don't understand this, but if this is what it's written in the Torah, then this is what must be. For some reason this is the way that the world is supposed to unfold, this is the, the story of the world as it's supposed to be. Right, and I think this idea, right, if it rings any truth, 
helps us to understand the Torah in general. Like we learn that the Torah is not just a book. It's not just a book of stories and history and laws and do's and don'ts. It's, a, it's, a, it's the blueprint of the universe. Right? The, Judea, the, the, the Jewish tradition, Judaism, teaches us that the essence of the Torah is that it is, it is the stuff from which the world was created. So much so that there's a teaching that says that when God wanted to create the world, God looked into the Torah and then created the world. That the Torah preceded creation. That the, that the Torah preceded this world. And again, that the, the Torah is, is way beyond just words on, on a page or words on parchment. It's really like the DNA, so to speak, on a spiritual level of the entire world. And Cain was tapping into this. Cain understood this. He was saying to his brother that this is the way it's meant to be. Right? Just like with his father, Adam, and their mother, Chava, they were meant on some reason to eat from that tree. They were meant, as we learned in this week's Torah portion as well, they were meant to eat from the tree. Why? We maybe don't understand. All right? But this is the way the story was supposed to go. And we see this in the Torah, both in, in, in these stories and in other places as well, that there's a certain thing that must happen right, in order for the, the universe, in order for the world, in order for creation to go in the direction it's supposed to go. Right? And uh, again, if it opens up our eyes, even if we can't understand it, even if we can't understand why did this murder have to happen, the very first murder that ever did happen, if we can at least help us understand that the Torah is not just a book, right there, it, it's, it's worth everything. Right, it, right there, it's, it's done its job, so to speak. And um, starting the Torah anew and starting this, this new year, if we can keep this kind of understanding and this awareness of the Torah in our minds throughout the year, I think we can have a very different kind of year. I understand the, uh, as we go from week to week and, and, and learn the, the Torah portions and learn the words of, of each Torah portion and, and let them guide our lives. Let them help us to open up our eyes and see around us that what's written in the Torah is really a reflection of the world and what we see in the world is really a reflection of the Torah. That we should use, so to speak, the Torah uh, in the way that it's meant to be quote-unquote used right, to help us to understand right, that uh, what we're seeing is really a reflection of a very deep, deep spiritual wisdom and spiritual system and uh, really a reflection of the upper spiritual worlds. Many blessings from the land of Israel. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Bereshit, all the best, Shabbat Shalom.